एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम This video will be talking about a bit of complex and futuristic and the most advanced topic which is explaining the structure of atom. We are here with Schrodinger equation. You might have heard about the, the classical concept uh, of Schrodinger's cat, live or dead at the same time. If not yet, you can go on the internet and you can check about that. So, Schrodinger's equation is something that is related to explaining the modern aspects of atomic structure, particularly in light of quantum chemistry. So, that is what we are going to discuss in this video. We will have two parts of this video, part 1 and part 2. We will begin with part 1 where we will start with the quantum atomic model and we will learn about the fundamentals of this equation. And then we will gradually start looking at the structure of orbitals and uh, the concept of particle in a box. Welcome to Ashan Academy. My name is Aditya and you are watching Engineering Chemistry videos. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can refer this book from Ashan Publishing. You can find link for ebook in the description box below. So you must remember that atomic structure, as you have studied previously, is defined as a particle based structure which has a central solid core which is made up of protons and neutrons and collectively called nucleus around which electrons spin. So this was one of the oldest model of the atom that was produced uh, that was generated in, in early times by J.J. Thomson and then modified by Rutherford and much more addition to this atomic model was done by Niels Bohr. So what we usually imagine an atom is having a core and then electrons are revolving around that nucleus in the form of uh, some kind of particles. But a blow to this model came when the duality of matter and wave was observed. So you should know that every matter, every particle that can also behave as wave. And th that was uh, generally given by a very popular equation which is called as de Broglie equation. So de Broglie, he proposed the concept of dual nature of matter by giving an equation lambda equal to h divided by m and v. So this is an outcome of a very simple equation which you might have learned. h uh, c lambda which is representing which is representing the energy of a wave and also another equation that was given by Einstein which relates velocity and mass of particle or matter with that of energy. So combining these two equations we happen to get this relationship where we can find out wavelength of a matter which is having mass and certain velocity. Now if you ask me that if every matter has a dual nature, like we also have dual nature and uh, a, a wave or a photon also has a dual nature, it can behave as particle as well as wave. So why don't we see waves in our day-to-day -day lives? Why don't we see this pen as a wave? Why don't we see myself as a wave if uh, all the matter has dual nature? So answer to that question would come from this equation itself. If you look at the values here, h which is Planck's constant, this is a value of 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 which is quite a small number and if you take a, a matter which is a bit small like neutrons, protons, electrons which have negligible mass compared to this pen or me but they move at enormously fast velocities. So in order to have a significant wavelength by virtue of which a particle could appear as wave, we should have this denominator as large as possible. Now in order to make this large, either you should have velocity very high or you should have mass very high or you should have both the quantities very high. The good part about subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons is that although they are lighter but they have enormously high velocity. 
similarly photon you know velocity of the light that is enormously high so those particles including photon they can have significantly higher value of lambda compared to large objects like us or this pen so since we do not move fast since uh, although we have a good mass so we cannot have a very large value of lambda or it will be infinitesimally small and that's why we do not see a wave in everything although this has wave nature but we don't see its waves however if you look at electrons if you look at photons they are likely to behave both as wave and particle so that was the fundamental origin of the, the next type of model of an atom called quantum mechanical model we should understand and we should keep in mind that electrons can behave as waves now if you imagine that electrons are waves then we should not consider this model anymore electrons will not be spinning like a particle and they are not not stay no, they are not moving objects whose positions can be defined that also came clear from the heisenberg's uncertainty principle where it was stated that you cannot determine the position and momentum of an electron spinning electron all together at the same time so that uncertainty principle further confirms that these electrons are not particles anymore that means if it is a wave so how should atom look like if it is wave then we can imagine something like this let's say this is the central core of an atom and this is a circumference around the atom on which an electron is present but that electron is not present at any specific position rather it is moving like a wave around the entire circumference so there is a complete wave or you can imagine it like a cloud of electron density around the nucleus which is present at the uh, at all the places at same time so that is what is the meaning of dual nature of electron and this is how we gradually succeed or gradually move towards quantum mechanical model of atom i hope that you can imagine at least it is hard to imagine but at least you can make some sense out of it that how electrons are present around the nucleus in the modern quantum mechanical model now when there is one electron there will be one wave when there are two electrons there will be two waves when there are more electrons there will be more waves and if you go to the physics classical physics or uh, classical chemistry explaining waves you might also have learned about the nature of waves that if two waves are present and they are in same phase that means their crests and troughs are coming at the same time they will show a phenomenon of constructive interference the amplitude of this wave will increase and that will lead to the generation of a new standing wave which will have much higher amplitude so the next concept comes here that is when there are more than one electrons these waves are not independent of each other but they collect together and they undergo interference to form some kind of waves which are analogous to standing waves that means the amplitude or the possibilities of finding electrons at some places will be high and possibilities of finding electrons at some places will be low at the same time it is also likely that two waves of electrons they are not in the same phase for example one wave is like this and another electron which is spinning in the same orbit is having a wave form like this so it is likely that they will cancel out each other and that will be called as destructive interference and they will decrease the complete amplitude of the wave so this will be an example of destructive interference and this will be example of constructive interference so this was fundamental of understanding how quantum mechanical model might work now coming to the reality and coming to the mathematical explanation of this whole thing i mean you cannot see these waves by yourself but yes the evidences for proving this thing are there you can see the phenomena of diffraction from the electron wave just like waves do that just like photons do that so yes there are experimental evidences which prove 
that electrons are present as wave. Now, mathematical treatment of where this electron cloud is present, what is the actual uh, shape of the electron cloud, what is the probability distribution, all that came only after an explanation that was made by Schrodinger. So let us start talking about the topic, which is Schrodinger's equation. So this is a very famous equation given by Schrodinger, which explains how we can treat waves like a mathematical function. So it might uh, look a little bit uh, difficult for those who are not from mathematical background, but if you have already studied mathematics, this is a very simple equation. Here you have psi, which is representing a wave function. Now, what is a function in mathematics? Anything that you, that, that you try to calculate, like when you use algebra, x, y, z, these are functions. And uh, uh, for example, if you are doing any other calculations in mathematics or physics, then velocity, distance, all these things, all these variables may be considered as functions. Whereas this thing, h, is basically Hamiltonian operator. And E is energy function. So what this equation basically represents that Hamiltonian operator, when multiplied with the wave function, operator is something like a mathematical function, just like you do addition, subtraction. So putting a multiplication sign is an operator. Putting a minus sign is an operator. So just like that, H is a mathematical operator Hamiltonian operator. So this Hamiltonian operator when multiplied with wave function is actually equal to the calculated energy when multiplied with wave function. Now what is wave function? Wave function is defining the properties of waves of electrons which are spinning around the nucleus in the form of a complete wave. So how complete wave and its energy is related to a Hamiltonian operator multiplied with wave function that was the whole idea of Schrodinger's equation. That means you can generate some theoretical pictures or theoretical uh, images of how electrons are distributed on the basis of calculated energy of a specific orbit. And now from where this energy comes? If you remember the hydrogen atom spectra, a lot of information was generated by Niels Bohr when uh, he looked at the spectra of hydrogen because hydrogen has got only one electron and when you heat hydrogen and allow the light to pass through it, it selectively absorbs some amount of light. And that is by virtue of excitation of that electrons to different energy levels. So you notice that energy levels in the hydrogen atom are quantized. That means electron cannot be present anywhere, but it will be present at a specific distance from the nucleus. And that gave the idea of orbits. Orbits have specific energy and that energy can be calculated by looking observing the specific amount of uh, specific type of wavelength that is coming out from uh, spectra. But this equation uh, which was given by Schrodinger, this does not have a time factor. So we basically call this equation as time independent Schrodinger equation. Whereas uh, this equation can be transformed, it can be mathematically transformed by using different mathematical features and we can write it in a time dependent manner like this, iota and uh, reduced h. So this is a Planck's constant, which has already been divided by two pi. It is called reduced Planck's constant. This is an imaginary number, which is equivalent of square root of minus one. And a first order differential of psi, psi is the wave function. That means again, it is representing the wave of electron. But now this wave function is uh, a function of time and position. R can also be written at some places as x. So as a function of x and t, you are representing the wave function and its first order differential multiplied with iota and reduced h is actually equal to the sum of two factors that is potential energy associated with electron cloud, which is a product of V, that is potential energy, as a function of time and position and wave function as a function of time and position added with another factor that is square of reduced Planck's constant and this factor which is called as Laplacian function.
So just like we have an operator in one equation called Hamiltonian operator, similar to that we have another operator that is called as Laplacian operator. And uh, this is basically the second order differential like uh, d square uh, dx square, d square dy square, and d square dz square. So it is the second order differential of the specific axis. I mean, when you are defining an electron wave, that wave can be defined on three-dimensional space by taking x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, and the second-order differential component of each axis, x, y, and z, when added together, they give rise to this Laplacian uh, operator, and this can be replaced here, so then it is multiplied to wave function. So together, what do we summarize from this equation is that the wave function can actually be calculated. The values of wave function can be calculated or a wave of electron can be defined in space and time by using this equation. So don't worry about all these complex mathematical functions if you're not used to these things. They're never going to be used for calculations anyway. They are generally used to explain how electron cloud look like when you observe an atom by using this mathematical perspective. So that's all about this whole wave function. That was all we intended to learn. Now, one thing that we are more worried about in, in calculations, in mathematics, and bringing down to reality is that you are using an imaginary number here. And when you are using the square root of minus one or iota, it is difficult to process or difficult to realize in, in context of the real world. Instead of using the conventional psi values, wave function alone, which doesn't make much sense, the wave function was then transformed into, uh, or this equation was entirely transformed. This was transformed into another function that is called as psi square. So when you square, square root one minus one, that becomes positive and nothing will be negative when you use squared wave function. So squared wave function became little more useful to explain the geometry or shape of electron cloud, and that was defined as probability density. So whereas psi is just wave function, which was a kind of mathematical function alone, doesn't give much information about the realistic shape of electron cloud, the squared value of psi was much more meaningful and it provided the probability density. That means if you can use Schrodinger equation and you can transform this Schrodinger equation into another form where you can calculate psi square, you will be able to deduce the exact shapes of electron clouds which are present inside the orbits. So we will talk more about this. We will talk more about this in the second part of the video, this was the first part where we just looked at the equation. In the second part, we are going to look at the actual shape of orbits and orbitals which are deduced from the psi square web. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can refer this book from S. Chan Publishing. You can find link for ebook in the description box below. You can like, share and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.